Hey everyone, welcome to After Dark Analysis. Today, with the help of Mr. Davis, we're going to be talking about things that were missed on the original controversial art timeline series or have come out since that series was recorded. First up is 1976 with Virgin Killer from the Scorpions. This is the fourth studio album from the German heavy metal band. It was the first album of theirs to get attention outside of Europe. The problem with this wasn't so much the music, it's the cover art. And I did have to censor this for YouTube standards for obvious reasons. The title is described as being a reference to time as the killer of innocence. The original cover features a nude prepubescent girl, which a lot of people were not happy about. As you can see, the cracked cover effect has always been in there. That was not a change that was made. But this cover has been reissued multiple times with different forms of censorship and is still stirring controversy today. In May 2008, the site World Net Daily reported the cover image on Wikipedia to the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And it was investigated by the FBI. It was concluded that the artwork did not violate any U.S. laws. An officer of the Concerned Women for America, which is a conservative Christian advocacy group, commented, By allowing that image to remain posted, Wikipedia is helping further facilitate perversion and pedophilia. E-Content Magazine subsequently reported the Wikipedia's community internal debate as it concluded that prior discussion had determined by a board consensus that the Virgin Killer cover will not be removed, and asserted that Wikipedia contributors favor inclusion in all but the most extreme cases. In 2008, the Internet Watch Foundation, or IWF, which is a UK-based non-government organization, added the Wikipedia article to its internet blacklist due to concerns over legality of the image. As a result, people using many major UK ISPs were blocked from viewing the entire article. The IWF stated one of the reasons for reversing their decision was the controversy had increased public interest in the image, creating the Streisand effect. For those that don't know, the Streisand effect is a phenomenon where if people are told this is being suppressed, they become more interested in trying to find and look at it. It's named this because in 2003, entertainer Barbara Streisand tried to suppress images of her Malibu, California home, causing more traffic and interest than the home itself ever would have. The Human Centipede First Sequence 2009 If you are unfamiliar with this franchise, it all starts with a doctor and a dream of making conjoined triplets. To achieve this, he kidnaps three people and sews them together, anus to mouth, of course, the theory being that this will connect all of their digestive tracts. So, the first will eat real food and feed the other two. While director Tom Six billed the first film as 100% medically accurate, many doctors were quick to point out that the other two would die of malnourishment, an issue that will be corrected later out in the franchise. As outlandish as the idea was, surprisingly the first film wasn't that controversial. It received the normal reports of people leaving the theater that most gross-out style horror films get. The only notable controversy was Roger Ebert refusing to assign the film a star rating, not to be confused with giving it zero stars. He stated, The film is what it is and occupies a world where the stars don't shine. The Human Centipede 2 Full Sequence 2011. This is where the controversy really kicks off. A disturbed loner named Martin is inspired by the first film to create a human centipede of his own. Only this time, it will <gasps> have 12 people instead of 3. While this film was shot in color, Tom Six had to change it to black and white for being too gory. This is an old filmmaking tactic to avoid censorship. Think back to practically any film where aliens get shot. There's a reason the blood is almost never red. As long as the blood doesn't read as realistic, it helps secure a lower rating. On June 6, 2011, the BBFC, the UK Certification Board, refused this film a certificate, essentially banning it from theaters and home video. Eventually, it was given an 18 certificate after 32 cuts happened, shortening the runtime by a total of 2 minutes and 37 seconds. These included... Martin masturbating with sandpaper, a man's teeth being knocked out with a hammer, 
lips being stapled to a naked buttocks, forced defecation into another victim's mouth, Martin with barbed wire wrapped around his penis raping a woman, a newborn baby being killed, and staples being torn away from individuals' mouths and buttocks. The film was also banned in Australia. The uncut film was originally granted an R18 plus rating. This was later overruled by Minister for Justice Brendan O'Connor, who asked for a review of the rating, which is handled by a separate group called the Classification Review Board. On the 28th of November 2011, the film was refused classification by the unanimous decision of the board. It was granted an R18 certificate again when 30 seconds of the film was cut. It is banned in New Zealand and the film was never submitted for theatrical distribution. On April of 2012, the New Zealand Office of Film and Literature Classification classified the DVD version as objectionable. April 2016, a Tennessee high school teacher was suspended after showing this movie to their class. Tom Six argued that the movie shows teens how to handle bullies, even offering the teacher a signed copy. Funny considering the basis for the film was Six's reaction to people believing the first film would inspire copycats. The Human Centipede 3, Final Sequence, 2015 The third and final installment, once again, has someone copying the previous films. This time, it is in a prison and the centipede is 500 people long. With a runtime of an hour and 40 minutes, it is the longest entry, literally and figuratively, but Mama always said that size doesn't matter. This is also the most meta of the films. In the scene the inmates are shown the first two films, their reaction is to shout out real reviews of those movies. The prison warden and accountant even consult with Tom Six, appearing as himself. This is also where the nutrition issue is solved, by keeping the people sewn together on IV nutrients. The IVs and centipede itself are all pitched as a cost-saving measure and a deterrent to lessen recidivism, since people can be removed creating a thinly veiled commentary on the American prison system. Despite the ever-growing size of the centipede, this passed uncut in Australia with an R18 plus rating and even screened on national tour. It also passed uncut in the UK with an 18 certificate and in New Zealand with an R18 certificate. Not bad for a franchise that started out as a joke about punishing a child molester stitching their quote, mouth to the ass of a very fat truck driver. Follow your dreams, kids. Hate Crime, 2012 This film tells the story of a loving Jewish family. At least we assume that they're loving, since we only see about five minutes of them interacting before a bunch of neo-Nazis bust in during their son's birthday. If being a neo-Nazi hellbent on torturing a family weren't bad enough, they also have a serious hankering for meth, making their behavior progressively more erratic and depraved. Let's just say there is a bit where eyeballs are used as toys and another scene involving an oven. Yeah, it goes there with it. With this in mind, it shouldn't be surprising that in March of 2015, the film was refused a classification certificate by the British Board of Film Classification. This was due to scenes of strong violence, sexualized violence, all spurned by drug abuse and racial hatred. I believe the sexualized violence is referring to a scene with forced incestuous rape, but rape is often used throughout the film. This is the first ever video on demand submission to be refused by a certificate by the BBFC, but it is not legally banned as there is no requirement for films released solely online to be BBFC classified, but it is illegal to supply it on a physical medium since those are required to be BBFC classified. 2015, Atroz, a.k.a. Atrocious. This film is about the arrest of two people that struck a woman with their car. While they're in police custody, the commander-in-chief goes to check out the car. He finds a camcorder. On the camcorder, they find the relentless torture and murder of a prostitute. The police decide to deal out some justice of their own. By interrogating the perpetrators, they discover more videotapes exposing even more sexually deviant torture and murder. This one got a lot of buzz before it was released. It had the standard people threw up, people walked out, which happens a lot with more extreme horror films. If I had to compare this film to any other film, I would probably put it closer to the guinea pig franchise. 
while it does have a plot and there are reasons people are doing things, the movie is comprised heavily of footage of torture, specifically shot in a way that feels very realistic and very personal because it's point of view, because they were recording their own crimes. As the plot heavily implies, there is also a lot of sexual components to this, some of them being against the transgender community, some of them being against the homosexual community, which is always a hot button issue. This does raise the question, were these crimes committed because the victims were in the LGBT community? Or is that just happenstance and this just so happens to be a person that fits into that community that they just grabbed? And the film remains a little ambivalent about that. So unlike some of its more extreme counterparts on this list, this film was never banned or taken out of showing. It simply had a very extreme theater reaction of people leaving or getting sick, which happens a lot with these type of films. And honestly, half the time ends up being a marketing tactic. Raw, a.k.a. Grave, 2016. Raw tells the tale of a young woman who is attending school to become a veterinarian. She is also a strict vegetarian, but during a hazing ritual all incoming freshmen must endure, she is made to eat meat for the first time. As you probably suspect, things go downhill from there. This was originally rated in C-17 for graphic violence, but was cut enough to get an R rating in the US. The film boasts over 30 people at the Gothenburg Film Festival in Sweden, walking out, two of them fainting, and others running to the bathroom to be sick. To play on the hype, ushers at the New Art Theater in Los Angeles handed out custom-made vomit bags at a screening. One thing I would like to clarify is that even though this film is often put into the new French extremity category alongside the films like In My Skin, Inside, and Martyrs, it is nowhere near as graphic as those films. That is not a good or bad thing. I simply don't want people walking into this expecting the same level of gore delivered by aforementioned films. These comments also apply to the R-rated cuts. If an NC-17 cut ever surfaces, this could become a moot point. 1994 to present, Rammstein. In Germany, the band has faced repeated accusations of being fascist sympathizers because of the dark and sometimes militaristic images in their videos and their concerts, which having seen Rammstein live, I can vouch, yeah, they do have a decent amount of that. MTV Germany stated that the band aren't in any way connected with right-wing activities. And this is a criticism that is just kind of unavoidable for a band that's from Germany that just so happens to deal with harsh and sometimes militaristic style imagery. In 1995, their debut album cover featured the band Bare Chested, and some thought this resembled Strength Through Joy, which led to the accusation that the band was trying to sell themselves as poster boys for the master race. The band denies this. The song Links 234 was written as a response to these claims. The band said, My heart beats on the left. It's simple. If you want to put us in a political category, we're on the left side. And that's the reason we made the song. The song's title refers to the refrain of the German Communist Party song, which says, Then left to three. Then left to three. Here's a place, comrade, for you. So fall in with the Workers' United Front, for you are a worker too. There's clearly no ambiguity in that song and what they're referencing. Rammstein, along with plenty of other bands, was also cited in relation to the Columbine High School massacre in 1999. This band got it a bit worse, though, because many performers, it came out later, that Eric Harris and Dylan Claybolt didn't even like, i.e. Marilyn Manson. But in Eric Harris's 11th grade picture, he wore a Rammstein shirt. While this is true, there is no evidence linking Rammstein directly to the Columbine massacre. The band issued a statement saying, the members of Rammstein express their condolences and sympathy to all affected by the recent tragic events in Denver. They wish to make it clear that they have no lyrical content or political beliefs that could have possibly influenced such behavior. Additionally, members of Rammstein have children of their own in whom they continually strive to instill healthy and nonviolent values. In September of 2004, after the Beesland School hostage crisis had concluded, Russian authorities claimed that 
the terrorists had listened to the German hard rock group Rammstein on personal stereos during the siege to keep themselves edgy and fired up. But this claim has not been independently confirmed. One member of the band stated, it's important to think about what caused them to make their decisions, how they became animals, not their taste in music. Whenever something like this happens, it's like, okay, let's blame the artist. Such bullshit. Another member of the band stated, our music is made to release aggression and people listening to it are also needed to do that. But it's not our fault. Should we stop making hard music because bad people might like it? In November 2007, the perpetrator of the Jokela school shooting, I'm very sorry if I mispronounced that, included Rammstein as one of their favorite bands. However, he noted that the music, among other things, was not to blame for his decision. In May 2014, Elliot Rogers also claimed to be a fan of Rammstein, according to his YouTube records. On a lyrics video for Rammstein's song, Rogers wrote, Great song to listen to while daydreaming about being a powerful ruler. The Santa Barbara police later confirmed that Rogers' main motives were sexual and social rejection. In October 2004, the video for Meintel, which translates to My Part, caused a lot of controversy in Germany when it was released. It takes a darkly comedic view on the Armin Mivers case, showing one of the band members cross-dressing and bringing the other five around on leashes and rolling around in mud. But it hit number two on the charts. In January 2006, the band was sued for infringing on the rights to his story. On November 5th, 2009, their sixth studio album was placed on the index. I'm not even going to try and mess with that German name, but it translates to Federal Department for Media Harmful to Young People. Getting indexed on this list makes it illegal in Germany to make the album accessible to minors or display it where they can see it which effectively bans it because most places kids go into. The main objections to the depiction of the lead guitarist holding a woman wearing only a mask over his knee and lifting his hand like he's going to spank her. It's Chur Dearway. The lyrics to which supposedly assisted to spread dangerous BDSM techniques. I can't get clarification on if it was considered dangerous because it is BDSM or dangerous as in it's a dangerous act to perform, even in the context of a safe BDSM environment. But on November 16th, 2009, a stripped down version was released and was not indexed. It was fine. But as an end to this saga, on May 31st, 2010, the decision was reversed and the indexing of that album was deleted from the database on June 1st. In 2016, the band decided to sue Germany for compensation for the damages that had resulted from the indexing and the album not being allowed to be sold in Germany. So while most of the controversy surrounding this band has been in Germany, there seems to also be a persistent rumor, at least in the US, about Rammstein, how they were supposedly banned from the country. My research yielded no validity to this claim. The frontman and keyboardist were arrested in Worcester, Massachusetts, and charged with lewd and lascivious behavior. During one of their songs, the lead singer simulates anal sex with the keyboardist using a fake phallus, but both men are completely clothed during the act. Obviously, they got out of jail, but that's the closest thing I could find in anything to them being quote-unquote banned in America. It just seems that that's a persistent rumor around an already somewhat controversial band. So what do you think? Do you think some of this stuff is blown out of proportion? Do you think some of it was totally valid? Let us know what you think in the comments below. I'd like to thank Mr. Davis for joining in on this video. As always, if you like what you're seeing, please hit like, comment, subscribe. If you don't like what you're seeing, please leave me a comment and let me know. Thank you.